Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.04 p.m. and do a roll call of attendance. Doug. Here. Kelly. Here. Gaston. Here. And I'm here, so Dylan is absent. We are four here and one absent. Um, super. First up is public comment. Is there anyone here at all? Uh, we do Please. have a few people. I expect they're all here for the uh, agenda items, but if anybody okay. would like to make a public comment on anything not on the agenda, please raise your hand now. Anyone here? General public comment? No? Okay. Um, thank you. So we'll move on to liquor license transactions under Section 3. A continued transfer of all alcohol off-premises license and change of location, Shilpa Enterprises, Inc. to Oxbow Wines, LLC, 132 Coles Road. So this has been open for a couple of weeks and uh, or continued for a couple of weeks. And is somebody here to, do we have all the paperwork, Steve? Can we resolve this? Oh, Doug, go ahead. Was that a hearing that we continued? And if so, do we need to open it officially? I think it was continued from two two weeks ago. Two, you did two hearings at this point. Two hearings ago. So um, I guess we can, belt and suspenders, we can vote to reopen the public hearing. Is it, is, are we doing the hearing now? Have they got everything? They haven't submitted anything else, but we do have uh, Bruce McAmis, who's the, uh, the owner of um, Oxbow Wines here to speak. Okay. Do we want to, I guess, Open the hearing. We open the hearing. Doug? Yeah, I'll move to open the hearing just to, and then we can continue it as well later. But I'll okay, move great. To open it. Thanks. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Hallie. Um, let's take a vote. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye four to zero with one absent. The hearing is now open. So. Please. So um, I've received nothing else, uh, Bruce. You should be able to speak now if you'd like to update the board of the progress. Right. Hi, um, can everybody hear me yes. <clears throat> and or see yes, me? Welcome. Okay, I, I, I apologize for uh, missing the meeting two weeks ago. I um, had, uh, had to leave town on fairly short notice um, uh, and and was unable to, uh, to arrange somebody to cover for me. So um, just by way of a, a quick update, I apologize, this has dragged on for uh, several meetings now. Um, I think that we have finally um, got the, the framework of, of a lease, you know, of a longer, of a long-term lease agreement into place for uh, that would permit this transaction to go forward. Um, it has not been, you know, we haven't finalized it and or executed the lease yet, but, um, but I think that in two weeks, if, <laughs> by your grace uh you know you give us another extension we should i think be ready to go at that point and and uh whatever additional information uh we need to get to steve we'll we'll submit by then as well okay great thanks gaston uh th thank you so much i i was actually kind of did a page flip on the ap application and there were two little details that that i i think are missing that i wonder if you could uh supplement um the first is, I mean, it's it's just a simple math. I assume that both partners are 50-50. It shows the percentage for one, but not the other. So that's truly a, a, a just, it seems to be a typo, but might, it might as well complete it. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. that's that's a mistake. Benson, Benson Hyde and I are, are each 50-50 partners in, right. in Oxbow Wines. Yes, so it shows your 50, it doesn't have uh, his 50. Okay. That's, that's just a detail on page, uh, well, item six. Um, the other one is with on item 10, um, the financial disclosure. 
the um, it shows a an other of one hundred thirty five thousand, and I I think the form is asking to specify what that amount is for. Oh, I uh, and I, I don't know if we see that actually. I don't know if we see what that um, what that one hundred thirty five is for. Um, quite honestly, I, I I don't have the form. I don't have the documents in front of me at the moment yep. because yep. I I um, but I um, I guess if it's you know um, I I think we have some combination of you know sort of business generated um, you know the business is generating some some con um, some percentage of the of the of the purchase price of of the license. And then, um, you know, uh, Benson and or I will likely make up some of the difference. Um, so, um, but, but I don't have that totally um, finalized at this point. And, and I guess I, to be honest, I wasn't anticipating uh, discussing it <laughs> right, okay. right now. So, so. Yeah, so I guess if, uh, I think that would be, um, it would be a, a, something to, to look at uh, for our next meeting. And so just to, it's item number 10. And um, it shows the sources of the cash contribution that add up to 135. But I think the form is asking to know what what that's for. Um, and it, it, oh, uh, I, I, I beg your pardon. I may have misunderstood your question. I mean, um, 135 is the total contract purchase price for uh, for what we, the difference between what we have now from the town of Amherst, which is just a wine and malt off-premise license, and um, and the license that we are acquiring um, from um, the I forget the the company name, but from the the owners of the former Cousins Market. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I see. So the um, uh, it's set out to ask for what's the purchase price for real estate, what's the purchase price for business assets. And you had those as NA um, and the 135 in the other, but I guess it really is for the business assets. Well, yes, I mean, the, but the only asset being purchased is the license itself. But the, there, okay. there's no, there's no inventory. There's no okay. fixtures, right. furniture, and equipment. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and so I, I, I beg your pardon. I misunderstood yeah, yeah. Okay. your question. Okay. At first. Good. So, I, so I, I mean, maybe it's obvious to everybody else, but um, that would be a detail. If you're fixing a, the other typo, you could just put in that the this is for the uh, acquisition of the license. Sure. Okay. We'll do. So that those are items six and ten. Will you notice that, Gaston? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Mr. McAmos? Or anything to say? Or so two weeks puts us to our next meeting, which we don't have the date for yet because we were going to talk about um, meeting time. Um, so do we want to talk about meeting time now so we can get them a date quickly? Would that be, do we just set sure. like something? Is that all right with everyone? Is Tuesday going to work or do we want to move to a Thursday? And where is, I don't, hold on, let me grab my calendar. Is that appropriate to do at this point, Steve? Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Yeah. So today's the 24th. Um, do we need to close the hearing before we do this or can we just do this now? Um, we'll have to continue it anyway, so. Okay, so we just keep talking. All right, thanks. So today's the 24th and 29. So that would be the seventh or do we want to do the ninth of June? Does no one have a preference? Uh, uh, it's useful if, I don't know if, if we can keep, if, if we can keep like first and third or second and fourth through the so summer. I um, think we'd switched it to second and fourth at one point. Right, we were first and third Thursdays and then we wound up on second and fourth Tuesdays. Right, that's what so, I've got on my calendar. Right, so, but if we can, so I don't know, do we want to stick to first, does anyone have a preference, first and third, second? It doesn't matter to me, I, the, the date is going to be, so Doug, are your, your meetings are on Tuesdays, right? Is that? Okay. I wanted to unmute there. 
Uh, typically, yes, school committee meetings are on Tuesday nights, and okay. occasional Wednesday, but. The occasional Tuesday or Wednesday. All right, so um, does anyone have an objection to a Thursday evening at six at this point? Uh, I I I, uh, I can do the Thursdays. It's not an objection, but I guess I'd. Uh, I mean, I'm. I, I can do six if if uh, for everyone else five is equally good. Is five um, good? Five is good for me. Five is good for me. Thursday I think the five. question was. I think the question was whether Dylan had um, ZBA on on Thursdays. Oh right, but Dylan you, has ZBA. But That's right. But it would be at six if yes. it if it were right. Um, so maybe we can get away with Thursdays at five. Does anyone have a better day that they prefer? I, I can't do, um, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching Mondays at six, okay. uh, through the summer, basically. Okay. So Mondays at six are no good. Tuesdays, Doug has. Do you, uh, and and it, it's it, it's because it's a weekly thing. It's one of the committees is is as every week basically. Right, it's like four committees. Yeah, exactly. I think we could try week. for five o'clock on five Thursdays on and hope okay. that Dylan, you know, we'll just try to speed things through. And is he second and third? He's second. He's not first. No, I'm, I'm going to try one. to see if I can find out right now. He was the one that we had to move the sec. He was on first and like we had to alternate Thursdays for him. So yeah. we can alternate his Thursdays. Sorry, Mr. McCamus. We're just trying to oh, it's, get you a date okay. so we can continue your here. Um, Uh, the the zoning board of a meet of appeals is meeting the twenty sixth, so it's meeting this Thursday at six. So there. Um, and this Thursday is, I think, the fourth, right? It is the fourth. So, so would going to first and third Thursdays avoid Dylan's conflict, possibly, or is that a weekly meeting? I think it's a. I don't know. I thought it was every two weeks. Okay. Yeah, it's typically two weeks, I think. So okay. should we um, continue this hearing to this, the 16th? Would that give you enough, everyone enough time? Well, this, this, the second thing? would be the first of, of the first Thursday of the month. Right, but you- Oh, you, oh right, two, two weeks. weeks, yeah, 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 For this case, we need like two, two weeks at least, and that would give mm -hmm. us three weeks. So we could have a meeting on the second if we wanted to, and then just continue this particular hearing to the 16th of June. Does that sound good? All right. That sounds good. So if anyone has anything else to say, um, is there a motion to continue, continue this hearing until the 16th, Thursday, the 16th of June at five o'clock? So moved. All right, great. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, let's take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. Um, that's four to zero if one absent. The hearing is continued until Thursday, June 16th at 5 p.m. Thank you, Mr. McGamus, for coming in, and we'll see you then. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank bye bye. Have a good night. Bye bye. Have a good night. Okay. So the next two transactions. So these are things we've already approved, but they're follow ups, right, Steve? Yeah. So the motion. Um, on on these two applications last at the last hearing was right. um, there was a couple small things outstanding and the motion was to um, approve the applications contingents on everything coming in and nothing coming to my attention that the board's attention needed to be directed to um, and given that uh, we haven't received that paperwork yet I spoke with Marion last week and she thought it was prudent to um, put these back on the agenda so here we are, and we've got uh, Mr. Barstow Mans um, from the applicant of those two applications to uh, update the board. Hi, Mr. Barstow Mann, welcome. Um, we're just uh, wondering how things are going. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, last, last time we met, um, it was for protocol and for Amherst Oyster Bar. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that were outstanding uh, included um, financial statements, uh, updates to leases, mm -hmm. um, the uh, 
additional note on uh, basement and second floor levels and the application to reflect the manager uh, having 30 hours at each location. Mm -hmm. um, I did update the application to show 30 uh, for the manager's hours at each location, uh, updated the floor plans, the leases were sent in. Um, I did send in a bank account uh, screenshot as well as an email from our uh, bank saying that they were uh, in progress trying to get our small business loan um, finished and wrapped up. Um, <clears throat> went back and forth with Steve. He was saying that uh, he really wants something a little bit more robust for the financials and reached out to the uh, uh, ABCC uh, to understand what could be uh, passed as a financial uh, document and I am in progress with the bank. I don't have that official uh, letter on letterhead yet, um, but it is in progress. And that would be the final document to get to Steve and you all. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions or about this? Uh, we just thought that since it had been like a, a little over a week that an update would be advisable. Um, Steve, is there anything else? think so. No? Okay. Um, is everyone else satisfied with what's been submitted? Yes, Doug. Just, you know, we're, so I, I just want to be clear, we're still holding the license until that final piece comes in. Um, right. Sounds like we've got most of what we need, Steve, but but that, those financial statements are, are the final piece to, to sort of complete the application, correct? That's correct, yep. Okay. And, okay. And, and we'll hold the license until those are in, correct? Yeah, not in, it's not in shape to send to the ABCC without that. So, okay, great. all right, great. Um, if everyone's fine with everything, so um, thank you very much. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming in, um, and hope all goes well. All right. Thank you all for right. your time. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Thanks for doing that, Stephen. Bringing him in. Of course. I know we were a little. We talked about it and it, it just seemed to, I think I, at the last meeting, we said a week that he said he'd have a week, a week and it had just kind of been dragging out a little bit. So, um, uh, okay, temporary, what's next? Temporary outdoor dining applications. Veracruz, oh, this is Veracruzano. Yes, and so we have side. three here today. Okay, is anyone here for these? We have Sunya oh. from La Veracruzana. Oh, great. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Great, welcome. Thank you. Excited to be back outside. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> and and thank you so much. It it makes a huge difference for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, so is there anything about these that is this is just we did these last time, last year, right, Steve? Yeah, yep. They've been around since um first summer of COVID. Okay. if you will. Um, so um, we'll, we'll tackle them uh, individually, I guess. For Veracruzana, it's going to be pretty much identical to how it was the last two years. Um, okay. I, I, I do have one little question. Yes, sure. Are we allowed to put up, and this might be a question for Steve, and I apologize. Are we allowed to put up a tent? Um, I believe there would be some way for that to happen. Um, I think you'd probably need a building permit for that, but we should probably go over the details. Um, maybe uh, you can give me a call tomorrow, so you, we can talk through that. Okay, or we can put up umbrellas, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know that off the top of my head what exactly would be needed for that in terms of uh, building code stuff, but um, yeah, we can figure that out. Okay. Don't let that interfere with anything. All right, so did anyone have any, and I'm trying to find this project, fresh side, it's not fresh side. My, my only question uh, would be if you had any learning experience from the last time around that uh, would be useful for us to know about or that's leading you to change how you pursue the, the outdoor service this season. Um. No, you know what, it went, for me, it went surprisingly well. I thought we might have late night um, people hanging out. I thought that we might have late night people just hanging out after we're closed, trying to sit on the property. And none of that um, happened that I was aware of. So that was wonderful. 
um, why I inquire about the tent is just because um, it's just, it feels when the cars go by that it's just close. And I know from um, past experience with a tent, um, it helps really make it feel more um, cozy, but I can also, you know, do that with lattice and plants and umbrellas and stuff. But so no, I was surprised that it went as smoothly as it did, to be honest. Great. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone have any questions about the Veracruzano outdoor dining license? Anything else to say? If not, um, should we take a vote? I'll then take a motion to approve the license for La Veracruzano. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Any further discussion? If not, let's take a vote. Uh, Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Um, the outdoor dining license is approved for La Vera Cruzana. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good luck. And good luck. Yeah. Have a nice yeah. summer. Thank you. Okay. So the next one is, sorry, I'm just lost my, sorry, I lost my agenda for a sec. Is we that, have a uh, fresh side fresh and, side. um, Yes, and then Amherst Coffee. Is anyone here from Fresh Side? It doesn't appear we have anybody from either of those. From either one? Okay, and all right. So does anyone have any questions about either of these? Can we do these together or just? I think we could. Yeah, these are yeah. The, these are going to be, um, the bid got a grant to put in parklets. Oh, right. Which you might have seen going up. They're kind of little constructed um, structures that uh, people those can. Those little wooden things that people yeah. can like. Yeah, right. yeah and so. Um, their layouts changed a little bit from last year, um, especially uh, Amherst Coffee. They were they were inboard at the sidewalk last time with a kind of extension into a parking lot for the sidewalk, a parking uh, space for the sidewalk, and now they are going to be in the parking space fully. Okay. All right. Well, that gives them some more room. All right. Any questions or anything about these? Anything done? Did, did we have a, a picture of that for, for uh, oh. Amherst Coffee? Or either one, actually. I'm I don't to... have any pictures. I think they were just built. Okay. Um, they are right downtown. I don't know if my uh, my camera lens is good enough to get it from the window <laughs> here, but <laughs> it's okay. They look very nice. The, the real question. Nice. The, the real question nice. I'm sorry. The, the real question okay. I have is: is they are are they taking the parking spaces in front of the businesses as the as the location? Um. So they've got the sort of front door of their restaurant. And then sidewalk, and then and then they'll be in the parking spaces immediately in front. Is yes, that... yes, and I believe they each have two. Okay, I did notice on the I think it was on the fresh side management plan that it it, it under signage says no change from existing Amherst Coffee signage. So <laughs> it seems <laughs> as though they were. I mean, and not surprisingly, I know that the bid has been providing a lot of help as far as getting that sort of forms filled out. They probably. In sort of a cut and paste error um, or a lack of a of a you know replace uh it doesn't really bother me i think that um did both of these have uh similar last year as far as outdoor spaces yeah i think fresh side is using this was using the same space they just now yeah. in the park like amherst coffee did have that switch with um they used to be on the sidewalk with the parking spaces, kind of the auxiliary sidewalk, and now they're going to be in the parking spaces with the sidewalk remaining the sidewalk. Okay. And and you don't know of any difficulties either of them had with regard to um, outdoor service. No, I never had heard any concerns or problems with either of them, or or any of the outdoor dining really. Right. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the temporary outdoor dining licenses for Fresh Side and a fine cafe co incorporated? So moved. Thanks, Doug. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, any further discussion? No. Well, let's take a vote. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. The two. Temporary outdoor dining app license applications are approved for Fresh Side and Amherst Coffee. Great. 
All right. So special short-term alcohol serving licenses. And you said these are all these are all similar. And so you just sent one, right, Steve? Yes, they're all pretty much identical. The applicant originally tried to do it as one application, but the board does have that policy that they can't really go for more than um, a weekend or a week or so consecutive days. So right. they uh, reapplied with separate applications, but they are all identical. I think outside of that new dining commons, they just want to offer some, oh, yeah. some um, evening alcohol service on their outdoor patio there and in the indoor section there too. Okay. All right. Yes. Doug. Uh, just a, a question. Was, was this a license we granted last year or, or was there an indoor license for them uh, that we had last year? I don't believe they had this. They definitely didn't have it every night, every week last year. Um, they may have had um, one or two events in this space. I don't know if they were using that patio at this point for something like that. But I do think I do remember seeing um, applications at the Worcester Diving Commons. I don't remember exactly where they were in the uh, in the building or on the grounds. But um, I think that this this evening service thing is new. Okay. Any other questions about these licenses? And I, I did. I was told that there would be somebody from UMass Dining here, but it does not appear they have oh, no? shown up. So Kimberly McAllister. Six foot eight. Oh, there's one attendee. Oh, Sumia Um. I think okay. for me, that if I may. Yeah. Yeah. The the questions for me relative to the to the, you know, working at the DC. I mean, you know, we've had. Um, this in the past, um, this is purely an, an external uh, uh, application. Is that right? Um, you mean in terms of the location within the grounds? Yeah, it's just it's just the outside patio patio area. It's enclosed. Um, I think it's the outdoor patio area and the um, and the. Um, the in that one indoor section of the cafe that's noted on the plan. Okay. Is so that there, the, there is, is a that, piece inside? Okay. Is that that just the the little one right? Let me see. This is the third revision of the site plan. This is the this was the first oh, one I said so was, this adequate. Is, was it? That's the lobby that they have, right? So the outside pet. This is in the front or in the back? This has got to be in the front, right? I believe so. And then they have you walk in, and then there's a little cafe on the on the right as you kind of you're going in, and then the rest of it is this huge sort of lobby with televisions and things, and then they have the stairs going up to the main part of the dining hall. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have any concerns about that or? Any other questions? Doug, did you want to? No, I just, I, I think, you know, we've, we've worked with these folks before. I mean, I think right. as far as, you know, service of alcohol, they've been good, especially given that they're on campus where and it, it's over the summer. So the student population is under 21 is a lot less than it normally is. But, right. but I don't think we've had any issues with them in the past as far as service and that sort of thing. Um, but I'm just, Try to zoom in on a map a little bit here to see the if the picture can oh picture on Google shows them during construction, so that doesn't help. Um, anyway, I, I think that the the key thing for me is is that they've got a little bit of indoor and outdoor space. Um, if they've got you know decent uh, you know sort of uh, site control, because I think with the outdoor they've got a limited according to the picture, they've just got two exits, which um, Think they can easily see from the inside. I presume that the um, it, Steve. Do you happen to know how much outdoor seating there is and how much indoor seating there is? I don't know. Not not yeah. beyond what's in that site plan. I they, in the application. I think it notes um, how many attendees they expect. I don't know if it, fifty to hundred. That's a pretty broad range. That but is a pretty broad range. A hundred would be a little bit. That'd be pretty cozy. I I doubt they'll get to hundred. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a that's a modest crowd. Again, I think we're, we're going to. I'm going to operate from a from the standpoint of you know we've had good experience with these folks in the past, and their their uh, quality of service and and understanding expectations we have of them. So, I don't have any real objections to this. Okay. Anybody else have any objections or concerns about it? No. Okay. 
If there are none, then I will entertain a motion for uh, to approve the special short-term alcohol serving licenses SST 22-17 through SST 22-28 um, top of the campus ink all alcohol at the Worcester Diamond Commons. And I would suggest this is not uh, reviewed by the police chief yet, so I would just oh. suggest that um, any motions be made contingent on that. Pending review by the police chief. Yep, I'll move that contingent upon review by the police chief. All right, uh, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Hallie. Any further discussion? No, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye, four to zero with one absent. Um, the short-term alcohol serving licenses are approved for UMass. Okay, super, thanks. So um, moving on to discussion items. So we have a meeting time on the 16th of June at five. Do we wanna do one on the, on the second, which would be next week, right? Or just wait until the 16th? I was going to bring this up in um, topics not reasonably anticipated, Marion, but um, okay. it's probably a good time. Just that request we got for the um, for that that to hold a special hearing for that potential oh, application yeah. that would okay. be coming. Yeah, why don't you talk about that, Steve? So um, I've been in touch with a woman named Hannah Rextoff, and I think she's I think she's been spoken at the board meetings before. Um, she is um, the some kind of community manager or something for WD Coles in the Mill District, and she helps plan events and things like that. And she is working with um, a pride committee to hold a event, I believe, on June fourth, um, on the on the uh, the site um, up somewhere in the Mill District there um, for a pride event. And um, I've been in contact with her over the last month or so. I let her know about the board's hearing dates, and um, I think due to some confusion as to what she had to have ready for a short-term license application, she did not submit one. Um, in time for this board's hearing. And um, she wrote a letter to Marion requesting that the board, um, you know, meet at some time in, in between that before the next, um, what was the next regularly scheduled meeting on, on June 9th to uh, potentially approve um, an application were it to be submitted. So do we want to, whatever mind meeting on the second and for like very quickly? To approve that, does that sound yeah. right? Okay, Fine with me. sounds great. And, I mean, and, and uh, let's talk about this uh, enforcement action. We may wish to uh, put that on the agenda for the second yeah. as well. Okay, all right. So why don't we do that? So we'll have a meeting. So we'll, let's see, we'll have back to our first and third Thursdays at five o'clock. So we'll have a meeting uh, next week, June 2nd, probably pretty quick, but with some discussion of the enforcement action. Um, and then you could, Steve, you can, if you won't mind, please letting that her know that we will be, if she gets everything in, um, we can meet then and do her license. Okay. So just for the, the minutes, so the board wants to move, um, semi-permanently for the time being to first and or the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. Yes. We are second moving and fourth. Okay. Se until further notice until schedule schedules change again. We're, we're first and third Thursday, 5 PM, so 5 PM. Correct. Okay. All right. So is that it for meeting time? Okay. Rental registration program. All right, Gaston. Did has everyone get yes. the, the the thing from the the, the draft from the CRC? Yes. Yeah. I, I've had a chance to, to, to look through the documents and um, I can just give a few highlights of what I, I think I understand to be the policy goals and some of the approaches. And then the question that was posed um, to us by uh, Councillor Mary Jo Henneke is, uh, do we, the License Commission, want to get involved in, in any of the licenses that are implicated by, by uh, rentals? And um, we can come back to that. But let me just identify what I see as the, the key policy goals. 
Uh, number one, stronger enforcement, especially with respect to issues that have arisen from student homes. Uh, in fact, one of the um, uh, drafting methods in this um, draft is to actually define a student home and then uh, try to create additional potential enforcement and uh, address potential issues that arise from, from, from that. Um, the idea currently is to create a point system where there are, um, you know, you get bad points in different ways. And if they add up to 10 points then your rental license can be suspended. Um, uh, whereas currently uh, rental inspection licenses are self-serve, landlords uh, conduct them themselves. Um, the, the goal of having stronger enforcement has uh, flipped the, the default uh, to be mandatory inspection with some exceptions. Um, and the key exceptions are uh, owner-occupied multifamily of six units or less. Dwelling units inside your home would also be uh, exempted from a mandatory town inspection. Um, uh, the draft is also, as uh, we were concerned to do in, in our efforts, uh, Hallie and I, uh, wants to recognize and address short-term rentals directly. And um, uh, they are following the kind of state cutoff for having to report and pay tax, which is 14 days or less in a year. So beyond 14 days in a year, you're also into the rental inspection regime, whether it's mandatory or not, I understand to be based on that same idea. If it's owner occupied six family or less, it's a kind of, um, self-serve inspection. Uh, an additional policy goal in, in, in this effort is to try to promote energy efficiency and sustainability. And I think that I, what I see is the counselors kind of fishing in the dark for how to do that. Um, uh, possibly flipping the point system is what I could gather um, to try to create some positive incentives. But I think that my understanding is that the ideas there are pretty preliminary and, and still trying to figure out how you can use a rental license regime and enforcement regime to promote energy efficiency. Um, so that's, um, you know, from a, from a very high level, uh, what I see to be some of the big focus areas. And I, I would love uh, to hear if, if Steve, if, you know, from, from where you're sitting, you see um, other issues or you want to underscore or, or modify anything I said. I think that's a great summary, Gaston, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, the GOL did invite me to speak at their meeting on Thursday just to kind of go over some of the more technical aspects of applications and how they're handled. Um, but I think, um, you know, the mandatory inspection idea is a good one, and it would obviously require more staff resources for us, but, um, you know, our staff really is stretched too thin with, um, with even the level of enforcement they have now, so... Um, I think that's a good thing if it can be uh, accompanied by, you know, more more inspectors potentially or more inspector time, and um, and would help to address um, some of those concerns, especially um, around the the problem properties because there are a few that seem to crop up time and time and time again, um, and uh, I do think uh, a more more head on addressing short term rentals is a good idea and a good way to be proactive because we've seen that start to cause um, a lot of problems in some other communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doug. Um, just a couple of follow-up questions for, for Steve on that. Um, has anyone made an estimate of what a, additional staffing would be necessary to do this, given the large number of rental? And and also, I think that you know, there's some things that are that are nuisance-related. Some are safety-related. It's kind of it's kind of like with the common vehicular license, and you know, then at the same time, you have you know very specific food, and depending on what you serve and how you serve it, there's different kinds of of uh, 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 safety and food inspections that you have to undergo and, and fire, uh, fire inspections you have to go. So I presume that the, that the idea is, is that you would have multiple things that would be getting inspected um, and that potentially is multiple people. So there's a whole scheduling question there because I don't think, uh, especially if you get into safety questions or, or that sort of thing that you, you know, you're probably gonna need to have the uh, fire department person do that type of an inspection, uh, whereas you know uh, other sort of structural safety kinds of things and other uh, you know questions around parking and and that sort of stuff, um, 
are more appropriate for the building building uh, inspection staff. So I'm just curious your thoughts on that, or, or if people kind of thought through what that what it might entail to do that inspection and and the level of uh, staffing necessary. Yeah, it's the level of staffing. Um, I don't know if I can really speak on that intelligently. I know um, Rob has been working more closely on that issue, and um, I don't want to say something that might be incorrect, but um, you know, I think our inspectors are are stretched um, a little thin as it is with just you know complaint complaint driven inspections. Um, so I think it's safe to say there would have to be some level of increased staffing, but I don't know if I can speak towards any specifics. Um, as far as how it's split up, um, I mean, I, uh, I know how it's done for the fraternity and sorority inspections is typically um, they have to be done once a semester and um, there will be somebody from the um, building department, the uh, fire department and the health department who all go there and take a look at different things. Um, I think that, that that level of inspection is a little bit more than what people are envisioning for these um, these these properties and I believe that it would probably just be the building that would be going out unless there's some kind of complaint response going on. Um, so I hope that answers your question as best as I can. If I can just follow up. I mean, I think the part of the reason why I ask that question is because, you know, if you can coordinate, so let's let's presume for no other reason than mental exercise here, that you know, we need two inspectors to go because they have expertise in two different areas. Um, you know, it, just out of you know uh, courtesy to the to the uh, the sort of uh, landlord and property owner, because uh, a lot of these are are you know uh, smaller outfits. They're not commercial. You know, it's a person who owns this a house, um, and they you know an extra house. They have like their house, and they have a, a rental house, and so they're not you know huge uh, in the real estate market. There are some that are that where they have multiple homes, and they you know it's a true uh, you know primary you know, business that they run. But I think about the sort of smaller cases and, and some of the exemptions will exclude some of these, but I just think about, you know, we don't want to be too burdensome. Uh, if we have, you know, multiple, you know, inspectors that need to be there, we want to coordinate so that they both show up at the same time so that the, the, the landlord has, you know, just has one appointment to make, not two twice a year, you know, suddenly it's four, the number starts to be at large. Um, so I'm just curious if that's part of the thinking that's going on, if it, if it ends up being, uh, more than one inspector that needs to visit the location. Yeah, it's actually, um, that's the first time I'm hearing that kind of concern in relation to this. And um, I know that um, just from casual conversations I've had with some of the other inspectors, what they, um, they're looking at kind of as a, as a example is the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan, which does have a similar program where they inspect every rental property. And um, I believe how that works is it's on kind of a rolling basis where they try to get to each property every three or four years. Um, and I think that they're kind of flat out even keeping up with that. Um, but I believe it's primarily the building inspectors that would go out to these residential properties and they, you know, they look at smoke detectors and things like that. And, um, you know, fire might be called in if there's some kind of bigger issue, but I do think that, um, it probably would be primarily just the building inspectors going out. I don't know if you've heard anything different guest on. No. I, I think to the question of whether we want to you know, sort of touch it, you own it kind of thing. Um, I mean, I do think we have, by virtue of having uh, the experience of, of going through that, you know, that sort of um, process of adjudication relative to uh, liquor licenses, um, you know, we sort of have a mechanism that we can parallel for this sort of thing if we need to review a case and, and, you know, revoke a license. And, you know, I think there's some weird things that come into that. Like, if you revoke the license, do you suddenly then put the tenants on the street or, or what happens with yeah. regard to that. I mean, I think those are, you know, not ones that we necessarily need to resolve. Those are ones that I think the, the council needs to resolve, but at the same time, it's not a uh, way out of form for us to potentially take this on. I, I think we might be better suited in some ways than the council just because we're more in that modality than they are. Okay. Yeah, I think, go ahead, please. I was just going to say, I think that's a good point. And uh, I know that was even kind of considered um, a couple of years ago when the form of government changed because there used to be a rental appeals board that is in the bylaw. I don't know if it's actually ever met, but um, I think it was supposed to be a, a member of the select board, a member of the ZBA, and a member of the planning board it was kind of going to form this, uh, this super group, if you will. But um, 
I think that's well suited. Go ahead, guest on it. No, no, I I'm, I was just kind of going to the to the section in the longer draft that was shared several weeks ago uh, about suspension of residential rental license. Precisely, try to answer Doug's good question: What happens to the people living there? Um, and I'm I'm not uh, I, I I can't I'm not seeing the answer in plain English here, and it's a very good question um, to, uh, to 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 ask. Um, Mandy Joe. So um, I'd be happy to um, kind of draft uh, a, an email back to her telling, telling her some of the kind of policy questions. And um, I'll be honest, my initial reaction was, you know, what do we know about, what we know about these housing issues? Um, uh, but on the other hand, if our uh, competency is, is more on the kind of evaluating uh, compliance and doing enforcement at not that we do that so often, but compared to the town council, let's say, or some other administrative body, maybe um, maybe we are um, uh, best suited. I think we'd want to um, kind of beef up some of our process for these adversarial hearings mm -hmm. because it's very different in tenor to our day-to-day -day fare. Um, but uh, I, I'd be happy. Um, how about I do this? Uh, let me draft an email that I send to um, Stephen Marion. Um, uh, Marion's been having direct kind of contact with, with Man Mandy Joe as well on this and um, subject to any feedback from um, Marion and, and Steve, send it out to the full uh, board to, to see if you have any comments so that we kind of get, get our, our policy considerations that we want to get into their hopper of process because uh, I mean I could show you their their time plan but they they've got kind of weeks mapped out for three months including public hearings and so on um, so I think as a matter of efficiency it would be good to send one message with a set of um, questions and uh, and say you know that in principle we are open to, to serving this function for kind of the reasons that that we've just covered if, does that seem like a, a good approach. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds great. Okay, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll send an email this week to uh, Stephen Marion. All right, super. Thanks, Gaston. Yep. Um, great. That anything else on this for the time being, or we'll just await Gaston's email. Um, all right. Item C, Doug. Adult use. Anything? No new update. No new updates. Okay. Um, moving on to the lunch cart regulations. I have sent um, the draft to Gabrielle, even though um, Gabrielle has had COVID. And so I'm waiting to hear back from her and then I will be probably not on the 2nd, but probably on the 16th of June, I will have something to, um, to share with everybody. So that's where I am with that. E, guidelines, regulations for liquor license decisions. And this I did. got something back, right? Yeah, I did a quick, quick, three or four page scan of the comments and I can kind of incorporate them into a new draft and send it out to everybody. And okay. then hopefully, you know, after that, maybe if there's no more feedback, we can vote on them. Okay, sounds good. My goal is by the end of July to get it passed. <laughs> Was that it? Was that feedback in the in the first packet today? In the first packet for this meeting? No, no that it came, came in today. today. In the second one. That was in the second in the second packet. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. So everybody, take a look at that, and then we'll wait to hear. Um, back from but it's separate from the email uh, from 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 Attorney Riley about the pocket licenses. He yes. added that as an addendum. Um, oh, okay. Just to keep in mind, I think there was some language in the uh, in the guidelines relating to that, and he just wanted to update us on the state of the law. Okay, I just want to make sure I know. Um, I see, got it. I see the KP doc. Okay, now I now I know where it is. All right, that's great. Um, F license fee comparison. Uh, nothing to report. Nothing. Okay, totally fine. Um, great. So discussion items are. Finished. Topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Steve, let's talk about the thing we're going to talk about more next time. Yes. Hazel's Kitchen. What's happened? In so I received this morning an email from the ABCC 
um, containing a uh, inspector's report detailing violations that were found. I guess on May 4th, they um, four investigators went in. They do do periodic checks of, of establishments all over the state, and they were in Amherst that night and um, went to check on Hazel's Blue Lagoon, and they um, were initially denied entrance to the building, and um, there was a... I don't even want to say altercation, but there was a bit of a confrontation between one of the bouncers and one of the investigators. Um, the investigators went in and um, appeared that no, noted that everybody looked very youthful there. Um, they carded a few people, six of whom ended up having fake IDs. Um, and so um, they have been um, brought up on those charges and um, the ABCC will be holding a hearing. Um, so this brings up an interesting question about the um, parallel jurisdiction that the ABCC and the local licensing authority has over these matters, um, where either party really has the ability to enforce um, any kind of violations of uh, the liquor laws. Um, and in this case, the ABCC was the investigating uh, agency, and um, they will be holding their own hearing, just like we might hold ours and we have in the past. Um, and uh, it's an interesting question. If the town wants to do something based on this, I don't actually know um, how much latitude we have um, given the parallel jurisdiction issues. Um, so I can certainly inquire if the board is interested. Um, but um, yeah, this just came in today and um, I thought it was worth sharing. I forwarded it to the uh, Amherst Police Department as well, just so they're aware. All right, thanks, Steve. Doug. Um, I believe, you know, in in the past, I don't think it's been since we've been a board of license commissioner, pre perhaps previous to that. I think the ABCC um, had found some of those kind of violations and then referred them to us for um, the hearing as opposed to them taking on the hearing themselves. So I'm a, I'm a little surprised to hear that they were, that they're doing the hearing. Um, I mean, I'm fine with it <laughs> personally, I just, but I'm just a little surprised because I think in the past, uh, the ones we've had, they've, they've referred them to us for, for action. Um, but I, I could be misremembering, but do you recall? Or I can recall times in the past where this has come up and they have, um, they have done it all in-house, so to speak. Um, I've never heard of it being referred, but um, you have longer experience than I do, so I will certainly take your word for it. It, it might have been something quite, quite minor that they referred to us. Right. Oh, uh, who's going to go? Gaston, then, oh. Kelly? Oh, Kelly? Oh, no, go, Gaston. Well, I'll, I'll let you go, but can we, um, I'm just looking at the second packet that came in. Could we put on the next meeting agenda to talk about the pocket license issues yes. that, are, that are addressed by, yeah, Attorney Riley? Okay. okay. Um, I, I'll, I'll comment on this, but after you, Kelly. Uh, I mean, I would love to find out more about what we can do, because I think sending a message that we also don't tolerate underage drinking is important to come from us. And I'm wondering now if the ABCC will be targeting more of our restaurants and bars, and it might be worth letting Gabrielle Gould know just so she can shoot out a remind, gentle reminder that even though UMass is out for the semester, we still take this seriously. Yeah, I can, I can afford to launch That's her, a great sir. idea. Thank you, Kelly. Gaston? My, my question is, I, I'm just looking at the investigative report, Steve. I don't, did you receive anything else? Yes, there was some other information about the uh, the hearing date and how to uh, how to participate in the hearing. Okay, not a link to the hearing, but could uh, could you send us that too? I'm just curious how they how they talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I will. Um, I'll just send you the full email right now. Okay. So they just send it to you as a to, to be informed and not for for us to take any action. Is that? That's correct. Yeah, they don't even send me the uh, the hearing link. I don't think. Okay. What's and the how... date? It's June fourteenth at noon, and I have just sent you along what I got. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a meeting that we have our our uh, 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 meeting plan for the twenty third, right? The... Uh, sorry, the the sixteenth. And and that's our last that's our last meeting. So then our our next meeting after that would be at the beginning of July. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean one I, one possibility would be to 
to ask um, the, the proprietor to come to the, our first meeting after their hearing. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, I mean, if no enforcement actions take it, I don't think there's any, um, there's any problem of just having a conversation with somebody. Okay. I think, I think it becomes more sticky when there's um, parallel enforcement action being taken, but I don't think there's any problem with conversations happening. I mean, I think it is a good question to ask uh, Attorney Riley, um, especially, you know, if you haven't written him back to thank him, you could do that and ask the question. Yeah, ask him that. And then, oh, good. Go ahead, Doug. I was just going to say, I think that's that's exactly a great question to ask, but sort of what's the, the dual enforcement opportunity there. But I think also, even if we're allowed to take action on our own, I think we want to be conscientious of what's um, what action ABCC has already taken. So it, it could be a thing where where we do maybe a hearing with with you know every intention of just uh sort of hearing the case as well and talking through the points that we like to make that may be slightly different than abcc makes um uh, and and you know we may not be able to but even if we are able to we may may not want to have any uh action that we take um but i think you know sort of certainly scheduling time to, to to discuss it with them but we may want to make it as formal as an actual hearing uh you know, just to sort of Im impress upon them the seriousness of this and, and how serious we take it. Okay, yes, Gaston. Yeah, I, 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 I agree 100% with Doug and I also like how Hallie put it before, um, that it's important to um, communicate that, you know, we care about this directly, independently of the, of the ABCC. Right. And um, I mean, I, you know, I assume the ABCC handles its its matters well, but we also have a certain, I would say, kind of responsibility to uh, the establishment that is, you know, kind of independent uh, uh, from the ABCC. Okay, definitely. Um, okay, so if we can invite them for the, we're thinking the 16th, June 16th, we invite them, or do we schedule a hearing for that day, or just a... Um, I don't, I mean, I don't think, I don't, I guess this is a question to the attorney, but I don't know if, oh, okay. um, you know, we could, in any case, really have parallel hearings going on while they're also right. waiting for the, okay. um, you know, this is at this point allegations that haven't been, um, I guess there's not really a conviction with this okay. type of thing, but there hasn't been a hearing on this. Um, so it's just the investigator's report at this point. Okay. Um, so we don't invite them until we hear the results of that hearing. Well, that should be June. Right, what the was 14th. it? The 14th. Yeah. So, so at the 19th. Um, or the 23rd, would it be the 23rd? We would, they okay. would have a result unless it's continued at the state level. Okay. Does, um, does anyone have, is anyone available to attend that June 14th hearing? Do you know? I will you, try to. Can you try to go? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but, um, okay. I should be able to, I think I've gotten these once or twice in the past and, um, I don't even think they really send me the link unless I, I request it. So. so, and anyone can go to these, is that right? It should be a public hearing, yeah. A public you know, hearing, okay. I believe, yeah. All right, so let's put that on. Oh, Doug, did you have something else to say? I was just going to say, Steve, if you get the link, share it with us. And, and that yeah, way, I might yeah, be able to. Available, we, can, yeah. we can pop in and sort of make our presence known. Um, and then, um, yeah, I think the 16th, you know, I mean, maybe the ABCC rules and, and meets out punishment immediately but i i'd be surprised in some ways okay. Maybe not. All right. but i think the the you know if we decide that or if we find out from from attorney riley that we can do a hearing and we want to have a hearing it's probably july is a better time to schedule that anyway okay. um but that doesn't mean we wouldn't want to necessarily have an initial conversation with them on the 16th and, and just talk through what we uh may have may have seen or uh, okay. as part of their hearing with the abcc okay so schedule a conversation with them on the 16th, invite them and um, attend the hearing if we can. And then just, and then you're gonna talk to attor the attorney, Steve? And Steve. Yes, I'll okay. email okay. him tonight or tomorrow. Great, super, thank you. Um, and then we'll, should we talk about this at our next meeting too? Does anyone want to put it back on the discussion item? Yeah, okay. I think it's for it. All right, I so. I still might wanna hear what, Yes. All right. So let's throw this on the discussion item agenda for the 2nd of June. Okay. Anything else on this one? Uh, do we want to bring up summer travel plans next? Oh, for us. Right. 
Yes. Okay. So. Or not. I mean, it doesn't. No, let's do we have a minute? Does everybody have a minute? So, um, all right. So who's gone when? I'm gone the first week of July, which I guess would now include uh, a scheduled meeting on the 7th. On the 7th. So that's the 4th through the 8th. Yes. I'm gone uh, the 18th of June through the 20, the 24th, but that does not include a scheduled meeting. And then July 12th through the 20th or maybe 21st. And I'm not sure if that, does that include a meeting? Probably. I think the 21st we would have one, right? Is that right? Oh, I might be back by then. So, um, okay, meeting, right. Yeah, soon. Okay, anybody, Doug? Oh. I'm, out the, I'm out of town the July 23rd through 30th, which would be the 25th through 29th or the weekdays that week, so. Okay. So don't go out until the 30th. Okay. I'm gone July 9th through 26th, but okay. with time change, I should be able to attend meetings, but I am having um, surgery August 3rd and will be out oh, for no. a week or two. A oh, first no. of two hip replacements. <gasps> oh no. Just a, sorry to hear that, sorry. Yes, I am sorry to hear that as well. Yeah. Just a <laughs> follow-up, hey, Steve, the, uh, the you know, um, Modifications of, of open meeting law that allow us to meet virtually, doesn't that expire at the end of June or is it in July? And if so, then that may mean that our meetings in July will have to be in person, but oh. I just don't know if that changes or if they're contemplating extending it even further or making other modifications. That's a great question. Um, I know Dylan's been bringing that up almost every meeting since then. I still haven't heard anything. I uh, expect that we'll be making waves um, on the state and the local level, because, um, you know, we've all become so used to this. And I think pretty much mm -hmm. everybody still is meeting virtually. So mm -hmm. um, I would expect if there's any changes, it'll probably be, um, you know, be noticed to us. I don't expect they'll just let it expire and pull the rug out without any kind of discussion. But um, it probably would be something to keep in mind. Does, does it expire at the end of June or like the middle of July? Do you recall? July 31st is popping into my head, but I have low confidence of that. Or I'm going to do a quick, I'm going to do a quick search and find out. Uh, kind of enjoyed being, I mean, I love seeing you all in person, but yeah. there's something very easy about. Yeah, I mean, and, and, it, and it increases access, uh, not the, we get many uh, visitors in any form. Yeah. But I, I would think that our, um, many of the proprietors are happy to be able to zoom in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, just to accommodate your schedule, Hallie, maybe we'll have to do an on site meeting in Hawaii. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. My quick, my quick search shows that updated guidance on holding remote and hybrid meetings until July 15th, 2022. So I think it's still the middle of July that we're allowed yeah. to do that. Hopefully they'll continue the hybrid meeting option because then it can be some combination. Yeah. It may require somebody to be at a physical location in person, but I think the, I the, think rest the, the technical hybrid. back back end of that would be a bit challenging. So I think the town room is set up for that, but nowhere else. So we'd get right. kind of tight on space, but I um I am sure the town the, uh, the third floor there is, is keeping an eye on that because it will have a lot of implications for a lot of different boards and committees. Right. Yeah. But it's wise to, uh, to start thinking about that now. Right now, it looks like we don't just, we have two people, Helen and I will be out on the 21st. Which one will miss it? Of July. Of July, yeah, that's the one we'll be have. I have to out. finalize my plans, but I think oh, I okay. might be away that week too. So okay. I have the one afterwards. Well, maybe we'll, yeah, guest on. No, no, I mean, maybe we need to reschedule that meeting. Yeah, maybe we can just reschedule that, but we can, I guess, cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, okay. 
great. Well, we have that done. Um, Steve, could you let Dylan know that the meeting time has changed? Would that? Uh, yes, please? yes, Thank I will. Thank you, just so that he doesn't try to turn up on a Tuesday. Um, all right, anything else not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? Nope. Okay, any minutes? No minutes today. No, okay. Enough, All right. enough topics enough, anticipated. There were, yeah. enough, there were enough things to go over. All right, super. So is there a motion to, is there anything else? Anything else? No. Was it's there not. anything else? Was there anything else we were going to bring up in topics? I feel like there is, but maybe it's just. Oh, there was the lunch cart thing. You said somebody had inquired. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, you. Thank you for reminding me. Um, so, yeah, since this wasn't really a full notice thing, I, I guess we can't really launch into a full discussion, but I did want to put it into the board's mind. Um, strangely enough, after you know a year of not having hearing any questions about lunch carts, within a week I got two inquiries um, of people who were interested in holding late night lunch carts, and um, I, um, you know, the uh, the select board's regulations are still controlling, and they, I think, basically just say hours should be as approved by the board. Um, but I did want to put that into your mind as something to think about and something to consider. I don't know if any, either of these applicants are that serious, but um, you know, from a business sense, I think it makes a lot of sense, but there's also some other externalities we have to consider. So I just wanted to, uh, to plant that seed for you all. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know if the kind of placeholder for lunch cart regulations uh, is, is sufficient, but yeah, it, it this should. would be a good topic to discuss yeah. next time. Yeah. I actually do yeah. think actually you're a very good point guest on. I think that is actually sufficient if people want to have a more a little bit more thorough of a discussion. Okay. But we could tell Gabrielle that, that we want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So why don't you I'll send around the latest edition of the lunch cart regulations for next time and we'll tell Gabrielle about it. More about it. I okay. gotta jump. Okay. All right. Okay. Um a motion to adjourn. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Second. Thank you. Let's take a vote. Doug? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Gaston? I uh, yes. And I vote I 40 zero one absent. We're adjourned at 7 10 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks a lot, Steve. Bye.